Hello, my name is John Kenalopoulos and I would like to show you an example of a patient with hyperopia seen here, the preoperative pentacam maps of the right and left eye, treated in one eye with topography guided hyperopic correction with the Wavelight IQ laser and the Entrelace in order to adjust for angle kappa and in the left eye with a standard hyperopic correction with the same modalities. Here we're seeing the Entrelace applanation of the cornea we're going to try and slightly decenter our interlaced cornea flap nasally as we will see later on our ablation will be guided by topography over the visual axis and not the pupillary center we're seeing here the um, interlace creating our cornea flap 17 seconds the peripheral cut here. This is a superiorly hinged LASIK flap. The uh, applanation disc removed. Here we're seeing the two plans for correction on your left topography guided and on your right standard. If we're doing standard, we chose topography guided in the side. You can see that the treatment is decentered compared to the pupillary center but centered into the line of sight. Here we're going back into this right eye of the patient. We're preparing the uh, flap previously created with the entrelace. We're using a fine muscle hook here. And uh, you can clearly appreciate how this flap appears to be decentered towards our left on our screen, which is basically a nasal decentration of the flap for the patient. We're watching the surgeon's view here and uh, drying the cornea surface. We're going to center the uh, allegretto over the pupillary center seen here. And the ablation will be now driven with the proprietary software of uh, Wavelight using eight preoperative topographies in order for the ablation to be centered over the line of sight. A small intermission to attain a homogeneous dry bed. We can see the hypofluorescence of the multiple flying spot laser on the surface of the cornea. Our procedure is finished. We will bring back our flap into place, hydrate and wash the interface copiously in order to avoid any interface debris and conclude our LASIK procedure in this right eye again this is a topography guided hyperopic ablation the reason for using topography in this hyperop is our desire to center the ablation over the line of sight and not the center of the pupil using Pret Forte here to ascertain the gutter of the flap and make sure the flap is well centered using a Johnston applinator to iron out the center of the flap make sure no microstria will be present postoperatively one more drop of Pret Forte that would show us that our flap is sitting in the right position you can see here clearly the gutter of the flap delineated a drop of, uh, of floxacin and we're going to go straight into seeing the left eye. The left eye, we're going to use the same LASIK technique, a different ablation pattern. The applanation of the left cornea seen here with the uh, interlace, we are going to create a large 9.5 millimeter flap here as well. And the difference in this patient will be the ablation profile, which will be a standard hyperopic correction centered in the pupillary center. We're seeing here the entrelace ablation pattern. This flap is centered. to the pupil of the patient 
the flap is completed within seconds. The peripheral cut is seen here. Again, this flap is a superiorly hinged flap. And uh, as the we're going to see here, the treatment plan, which is clearly centered into the pupillary center, is a hyperopic correction of plus four and a half, no cylinder. We'll rinse off the surface. And um, this is the left eye of the same patient, a drop of antibiotic before we lift the flap. This flap now is centered over the central part of the pupil. This is the non-dominant eye, and this is, patient is part of a study comparing topography guided versus standard hyperopic treatments. We have published in the past our experience with standard hyperopic treatments with this technology. You can appreciate here this flap being centered over the pupillary center in opposite fashion to the right eye that we saw previously where the flap was significantly decentered nasally. Again, the laser will be now centered over the stroma and the hyperopic correction performed. We can see the milieu of uh, hyper fluorescence from the uh, laser spots landing onto the stroma and attaining the hyperopic correction. I utilize a dry technique obviously built into my nomogram. We can see already the ablation pattern, a perfect circle around the pupil. The procedure is completed within seconds. The four and a half diopters of hyperopic correction with a six and a half millimeter optical zone is completed within 35 seconds with this technology. The flap will be now placed into position. Again, in a fashion similar to the other eye, copious irrigation. And uh, fixation of the flap with the Johnston applinator to assure the absence of microstria. In a few seconds, we will see a comparison of the postoperative topography of the right and left eye, and you will be able to appreciate by looking at the pentacam images of the ablated corneas how different these ablations are. And our reasoning behind advocating topography guided treatments being the same. Here on our left side is the right eye and you can see that the ablation is slightly decentered nasally and appears to be much larger than the ablation that we're seeing on the right which is the surface of the cornea by pentacam of the left eye that received the standard treatment. Thank you very much for watching.